Okay. Let's talk about filters. For some, they take up a lot of space in your bag or your drawers, and maybe they don't really come out unless you really need them. They can be a nuisance. They can be cumbersome. They can require a dozen other things just to make them work. They can do technical things like help you use the correct settings like shutter speed. They can be used creatively to change the way light hits your sensor, like halation or haze, or even color filters. So I don't really talk about filters very often. In fact, I rarely even use them unless I'm doing something specific, like I'm out taking photos and I'm using a mist filter to soften some of the highlights or lift the shadows. However, when I'm out filming, I need to have an ND filter. And if you don't know what an ND filter is, it's basically sunglasses for your camera so that you can achieve the correct shutter speed. So let's get to the reason for this video specifically. These are the Freewell Magnetic Filters M2 2.0, which are their upgraded magnetic quick swap neutral density filter kit. In layman's terms, it has a bunch of ND filters in it of varying strength depending on the light that you have coming into your camera. Along with that, they have a circular polarizing filter, which can cut out reflections, and a UV filter, which basically these days they protect the front of your lens. In addition to that, these filters come with a magnetic front, which allows the filters to attach to your camera lens. So in order to illustrate how this specific system works, let me show you. A magnetic ring screws into the front of your lens. In my case, I got the 77 millimeter thread. It is the largest thread size that I own, so I figured that would be the best route. Once you have attached the magnetic ring, it is as simple as dropping the filters you want up against it. They will magnetize immediately and they have a pretty strong hold. Along with that, there is a metal lens cap with a loop on it. I'm not specifically sure how useful the loop is, but it looks cool, so props for that. Something I really like about these filters versus other filters I've used is it's the perfect price point. It's one of those things where you could spend a lot more money to have minimal, better results, but if you spend any less money, you'll have noticeably worse results. Freewell is a company that's kind of meeting somewhere in the middle to get you very good results, but without breaking the bank. Something else I like is the case. It's very handsome, and because it's a hard case, it will protect your filters. I have other filter pouches that are more compact or more sleek, but they are soft, so your lenses could get damaged if you lean on your camera bag. Something else I like is that this kit actually comes with an ND1000, and not a lot of kits come with this, but it is a very specifically useful type of ND filter. It's very strong. It's 10 stops of light. It's the kind of thing that maybe you wouldn't specifically use for filming, except maybe when you're filming an explosion or fire or something like that. This is more specifically a photography-centric type of filter. It's one that you could use for long shutter photography or long exposure photography. And something else that I like is that the filters are stackable. So if you had an ND8 on, but you were still getting reflections from the window of a car or the window of a building, you could just put the CPL, the circular polarizing filter, on top of it without having to screw anything in. It just attaches magnetically. And now to some of the negatives. One of them specifically is not because of the quality of the filters, but the function of this specific kit of filters. So this kit comes with an ND8, which is two stops of light, and an ND64, which is six stops of light. And those are two of the least useful ND filters for me specifically, because two stops of light isn't really a lot of light when you're outside. That's the difference between shooting your lens at f1.4 and f2.8. And if you're shooting outside at f1.4, all the power to you, 
but I think I would rather stop down and get more information in my shots. What would be more useful in a kit for someone like me would be an ND16, which is four stops, and an ND32, which is five stops. It's when it's too bright to stop down, because maybe you don't want to shoot at f8 or f11 those would be more useful for a situation when you were out filming because maybe you want to shoot at an f2.8 but without an nd filter you may be stuck shooting at f8 or f11 and that might be too much depth for your shot another thing that i don't specifically like and this may just be me is that this system requires you to have one of the magnetic rings on all of your lenses before you can magnetically attach those filters to me it's not a lot different than screw-on filters. The amount of time that you're saving is pretty negligible. Maybe you put a magnetic filter on and it takes you two seconds when a screw-on filter may take you six seconds. That's not a ton of time for me because usually I'm filming something that's either more planned or when I am there and I need the filters, I would have already put them on my lens. So the time you save isn't really any more convenient based on it being magnetic or screw-on. This is especially true if you consider that these filters are fixed NDs and not variable. So some filters variable NDs, you may have two to five stops, meaning you can shift it between two and five going lighter and darker as you need. Let's say with this kit, I put an ND8 on and it is not enough to make my image dark enough to get the correct exposure that I'm looking for. So I have to take that filter off and let's say I try on the ND64, which might be too much ND. So now my image is too dark. I'm kind of stuck. And that is one of the reasons why this kit may not be for me. So who are these filters for? I think, like I said earlier, these filters may be more for a photography-centric shooter that does some video, rather than somebody who does a lot of video and some photography, like me. These filters may be more suitable for photographers because they can do long exposure photography with the ND64 or with the ND1000, but less so for someone who does more video and filmmaking because there's no real convenience there. I would still have to remove filters and add filters, not saving a whole lot of time. I know this is probably not like my usual videos, but I'm trying something new and Freewell was kind enough to send me these filters and ask my opinion, so I figured I'd be honest about it. No money exchanged hands, and I got these filters from them, but there were no expectations in what I was to post, and they don't get to review what I post before I post it. So since these filters are more photography centric, at least in my opinion, and you're thinking of getting a filter set, I may not recommend these ones specifically for you, but Fruwell does make a set specifically for filmmakers. And those are the V2 magnetic filters, which come with variable NDs to make it much more convenient. In which case, yes, leave the filter on your camera if you're going to be outside all day. They have a three to seven stop filter that you can just snap onto your camera and not have to worry about it. And not only that, they come with some effects filters that I would absolutely use if I had this kit. So, free well if you're listening, please send me that kit and I will give you an incredible review. Allegedly. I wanted to say thank you to Freewell for letting me try out these filters, and thank you to you for watching. I never really know what I'm going to specifically say in these videos. I like to do the off-the-cuff sort of thing most of the time, and then the structure may feel a little bit more meandering, but maybe more natural. Not exactly sure, but I'm trying something. I'm trying a new thing. I'm not even using a key light today. I'm using a window over there, which, hey... That's new. Of course, once again, thank you for coming along. If you have not liked or subscribed, it does mean a lot. I am trying to get to 2,000 followers by the end of this month. If it happens, who knows, but it would mean a lot to me if you haven't yet subscribed, if you do. Thanks again, and until next time, adios. Allegedly.